Right, I'm back. Um, so now we'll do the final part of the tutorial where we'll reorganize the project a bit and we'll do the texturing and final renderings of the project. I'm not going to go into anything too fancy when it comes to the final render, just basic materials and uh, a basic final render and you can sort of take it there, take it from there and do whatever you want with it from there. So. Um, need to reorganize this project a bit just so it's a bit more um, organized and tolerable tolerable but first off I've noticed that these two shouldn't be symmetry symmetrized or shouldn't have symmetry so I'm just gonna turn this off I'm gonna select this object and take this out I'm gonna select this object and I'm sure I kept a saved version here so if I go and copy this bottom one out no if I copy this one out like there, that one, so that's the one that we want taken out. Then we can just go and see the project's a bit confusing in terms of what's what because it's not really organized that well. But if we take these two parts out, um, we can drag in a new null and then put these two parts inside this null. Rotate the null 180 degrees. And I shouldn't have actually taken out this. I don't know why I took that out. <laughs> That's my bad. So let me just rotate this back. I'll do that rotation and I'll just put this back in there. I don't know why. Oh yeah, I took it out the symmetry because I didn't want it um, symmetrized. But we'll just rotate this one piece 180 degrees, not the actual piece there. We'll take that out. Then this piece here we'll put inside the left side. And then we'll take this piece here and put it inside the right side. Cool, so now if I hide the right section, um, we need this piece inside the right section. We need this piece inside the right section. And that can be symmetrized, it's fine. So let's go bring that back. And if I hide the left section, that should disappear. Right section, that should disappear. And this thing should be getting symmetry. I don't know why it's okay. 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 Um, <clears throat> so I think we might want to do a bit of renaming just so we can sort of figure out what's going on here. So this can be our inner inner left. Uh, can't see the keyboard here. Inner left. Then we need to put this inside of a. Um, Subdivision surface. Sorry, wrong button. Subdivision surface. And we'll just rename that as well. And then on the right side here, <clears throat> this can be our mic. Mic base. Um, then this piece here can be our mic glass or mic, yeah, I'll just call it mic glass. Like so. This can be our inner right. Okay, I don't think we need to change anything in there. And then there's our outer right, our wire base, and then our wire. So things are a bit more organized now. And then this can be our head strap. Head strap. Bring in a new null. Call this head strap save there's our symmetry for our earmuffs and these two pieces here and we just take a look at the whole project everything looks fine um, pause head strap strap guide Then we call this head strap. Okay, so things are a bit more organized now. Um, now let's take a look at our subdivisions because we, for I guess for the viewing of everything, um, we want the subdivisions a bit low for the previewing of the textures and stuff, and then we can always bump it up when we're doing final renders and stuff. So we'll sort of, by doing these um, earmuffs here, so I think these are already too high anyway. So I'll just turn this down one. It depends on how close you're getting to your object, but I think this is too high. So let me go to, where's this thing? Sculpt, sculpt, sculpt. I'll just decrease this down one. 
um, and then here <coughs> on the right side I'll change this down to 2 just for our actual previewing of the texturing we don't need it to be super high I guess we'll leave that I'll turn that down to 2 and also depends on how close you get to the camera and then here uh, well, I think we should maybe no let's leave those there um, connector turn that down to 2 now we just have a bit of, we have fewer polygons so that it's easier on the previewing of the rendering, um, which is good. And <clears throat> now we can actually start to begin the rendering process. So I'm just going to open up the Octane Live Viewer here. Then we'll take a look at what our scene actually looks like. Let's load these in. Like so. So without any textures and stuff, you can already tell that there's some nice detail due to the sculpting, um, which makes the whole project look um, nice and detailed. You can go for some clay renders here, but what we need to do is this pattern that goes across here, and I think we'll do that in Photoshop. So not too sure how we're going to go about this, but we'll see. We'll create a new composition. Let's go... Uh, 500 by 500 <clears throat> and then we need that hexagon I don't even know what that shape is called but we need a shape like this and then we need to figure out how we're gonna make a tileable texture out of this so um, from what I can see the texture actually goes like this when I'm looking at my actual reference here and then this one goes down like so. So I think it's good to figure out the space between here and then we'll sort of figure out the space between the rest. So what's a good number? What's a good spacing between them? Let's see. Let me take a look. It is a bit of a thick gap, actually. And I think the gap's almost even half the size. So this gap should be probably even bigger. Let's make it like that just so that we have a nice thick gap here. What did I just do? Um... Like, like so, like so, okay, and then here we'll just make this green so it's a different color, blue actually, you know, like that, and then we'll save this as <coughs> Razor Tutorial, where's this Razor Tutorial, and we'll make a new folder called Assets. Then here we'll go save this as this this pattern editable. Cool. So on the right, we'll just align it in the middle there. Then we'll duplicate this, put this on the other side, like so. Let's just make sure this the centered. Um, let's center these like so. This needs to be centered, and then this also needs to be centered. Now let's try and move this. Cool. So uh, let's duplicate these and push them up like that. Then this one, we can duplicate this and push it up like so. Now, <clears throat> let's see here. That gap's fine, but the gap in between these, I think, is too thin. I'm not too sure how to calculate that to get that right. Um, Let's just see here. Let me push this a bit more. I guess it doesn't have to be perfect. So then this we can also push that side until it snaps. Um, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's hide this thing. 
and then let's sort of figure out I think these maybe need to be pushed down a bit more like so we can select these two and push them up as well uh, let's put a line in the middle just make sure that these are equal angles equal spaces here so let's make it a different color I'm sure you can um, Google this and you can sort of figure out the math in terms of um, how to get the spaces even between all of them, but I'm not going to do that right now. Let's do that and then we can go and push this up there. Let's push this down there like so. Delete that. Okay, so now we need to make this tidable and we'll do that by just scaling it until it's halfway between those, half by between, half by between, bleh, half by, halfway between, <laughs> halfway between these and, and here it should also be halfway between those. So let's go and scale these out. <clears throat> Select that, boom, select that, boom. And then if you go and crop this, it should make out a tileable piece for our texture. So let's go save this. We'll go and define a new pattern like so. And then let's go open a new project. We'll go with the two 2K texture project here. We'll bring in a solid color and then we'll apply a pattern onto there by going color overlay. Um, no, sorry. By going pattern overlay and then we'll pick the one that we just made, which is this one. Cool. So let's go <clears throat> save this as displacement pattern. And now what we'll do in here is we'll go, <coughs> we'll create a new material, bring up our live viewer, like so. And then we need to go and actually select this thing here and start to get our texture right. So we'll just disable this smoothing here we'll go ring select um let's select that face there we'll go down here select that face there go select fill selection select that i go set selection apply our new material and put our new selection in there then we'll go and bring in this texture by going image texture displacement pattern and we can just go in our scaling here so under our, under our uv mapping we'll change that to cubic then inside our scaling here we can just scale this down <coughs> so you can you can see that we have some seams going on here and we're going to fix that by checking where our actual see our actual pivot point is in the center and it's also at the wrong angle. So we're just going to go center our pivot point and let's see how we can get this angle to be correct. So let's align it to our selected edges. Cool. So now our pivot points corrected. Um, now our actual box, we can go and right click fit object and then we can change the angle until the angle is correct. Like so. And now those seams should no longer be there. So let's go and scale this up again. Like that. And just to make sure that there's no squashing and stretching and stuff, we're just going to make all of these the right the same size like that. And we can scale this down. All right, you can see we're still getting that. Still getting these. Oh, that might be due to the actual texture size. Okay, so let's scale it up until the 
seam isn't there anymore so it doesn't look like it's tiling correctly um, <clears throat> yeah so you can see it's not tiling properly here so what we could do is we could just scale it until it's tiling tiling properly but what we could also do is just make sure this is black and white first and then make a new one then we'll fix it so let's go put take this blue triangle down here we'll just put it down at the bottom we'll turn it off and then we'll put all of these inside of a group change this to a black color save it image um, define pattern and we'll go and apply this new pattern we just made we can just we can scale this down now like so and then if if you want you can also go and crop it until it's um actual it's until it's a tileable thing um, but now we'll just reload it and now we're getting the size that we wanted there so i think that size is very close to what we're looking for i think it maybe should be a bit bigger so i can go and scale it up a bit in here maybe go 12. let's save it and reload it and see i think that's right that's a bit hard to tell um let's go 14. And let's try again <clears throat> cool i think that's the right size so now we can just go copy this um, turn off our diffuse for a second, go into displacement. We'll just turn that down to 0.1. We'll go paste this inside our displacement here. We'll change the resolution to 2000. Maybe turn up this roughness. And then here, the extrusion, we can turn that down to 0.04. We can turn on our blurring here. Go three, something like that. I'm just taking a look at the actual reference here. Um, I feel like these these boxes here should be smaller. Let's go twelve. No thirteen. Save it. Then go reload here. Cool. So you can see they're actually penetrating out here. Um, just go turn off our texture display here and i think we can solve that by maybe pushing these things in a bit more let's take these lines in here let's scale them in maybe if you want you can even take these lines here like so this might start to not look like the actual real world reference but I guess it's fine. I want to be careful. What was my scaling set? Yeah. My axis for my scaling might have been wrong. So let me just make sure I undo that. And then make sure my axis is set to the normal. And then let's go scale it in slightly. Then let's take this line. This, no. Let's take this edge loop here. This ledge, edge loop there. And then let's go push it back. Take a look here. I don't think we're really solving the issue. <laughs> um, the issue might have to do with these two lines here. So let's go scale these down and see. There we go. And then let's go smooth it just to make sure. Okay, so I think we're getting close to what I was looking for. In terms of that, I might want to scale it down just slightly more cool and the top here um let's just go undo that smoothing turn it back on and then here we can just go and maybe push these down a bit do something like that and then i think we need to add another line here and then we need to go and take these lines here And we need to scale them in like so. Cool. 
So we've got that down. Um, I'm seeing something going on here. What's going on there? Let's go make to my selection. Um, let's go solo this. I might have selected polygons I didn't want to. So let me just go deselect those. Check the whole thing. Okay, I just selected some unnecessary polygons by accident. We can just go reset that selection. Let's reload this. Cool, so that's done. Now we can do the logo. So <clears throat> for that, I just used a razor logo, which I already have in my old project, so I don't need to go and re-download that. I can just go and steal it off the old razor Kraken project here. Razor logo and the razor logo text I'll take. So client no. So inside tutorial, I can go paste these in. <coughs> and then we can go and open up this razor logo here. And I might have let's go right click open with choose another app. I just moved my Photoshop to my SSD yesterday. So cool. So here you can see we just have a razor logo um, like that. And then it's inside of a Photoshop file and then I inverted it. So we can save that. We can bring that in with a new texture here. But here we want it on this section here. So we'll go select, ring select, select this, select this. We'll go Make sure we're not selecting our old selection here. We'll go set selection to make a new one. Go apply this material and then also inside of our tag here, just bring that tag in like so. So now it's selecting this section here. So if we go inside of our diffuse, bring in a new material, we can go raise a logo. Go UV, we can change this to cubic. And for some reason it's not showing, it's not, I don't think it's loading this PSD. So I might want to go and it's PSB for some reason, which is strange, but we'll go and just make a new image out of this just in case I'm having some issues with Photoshop here. I don't know why that's PSB, that's strange. Let's go change this. Maybe I can go resave this as a new project here and see. Large document formats. PSD, let's do that. Now we can go and delete the old one and remake and re-import this. Maybe that's okay. So wrong file format there. So we go scale this down. And we can change this to white. Well, let's go black. And then we can scale this up. So now we have our razor logo there which is good. It's not perfectly centered though, which is a bit annoying. Um, we could sort of adjust it this way, but it might be too difficult. Let's see how we can adjust this position here. Let's go one, let's go point one, let's go point one, uh, point one minus point one uh zero seven okay i think that's a bit more centered now okay um and then we'll just go and do the top strap so i'm sort of tackling all the most difficult things um right now which is the branding of the whole thing so this top section here i have another texture in here called the razor logo text which is just once again um, the razor logo as you can see and then I just added a TM there for my own text there so let's we'll go resave this again as a PSD not a PSB I don't know why it was saved as a PSB in the first place let's delete the old one we can close all this we don't need this anymore I don't think we need Photoshop anymore we can create a new texture apply it onto this object here uh, we'll go bring in this razor text here, like so. Uh, then 
we'll go and <clears throat> where's this thing the head strap so we're working on the head strap now we'll change our head strap to flat and then we'll scale this down like so I think we need to rotate this uh, minus 90 degrees, <clears throat> scale it down more. We'll change this to white color. And now we have our Razer logo at the top. If you want, if you don't want it to show at the bottom, you can just go uh, ring selection, ring selection. And then on the other side, ring selection, fill, set selection and then you can just go and do that so now it's not showing now it's not showing at the bottom it's just at the top so those are the hardest parts or the most tricky parts the rest is quite simple in terms of texturing depends on the type of scene you're going for uh, i'm not going to go for anything fancy um, i'm just going to do some basic texturing when it comes down to making this look all right, so what can we do? Ooh, this section, this part here as well needs to be redone. And I'm not too sure how I can read. I don't want to redo this, this thing. I think we might have to. Um, so let's select this and then see. How can we use only the parts that we need of this and then shift it over to the other side? I think we'll just redo it. No, we won't actually, that's a lie. I'm not gonna do that. Let me go and create a copy. We'll solo this. Then we'll go and make all of this editable. Oh, that caused some issues there. Let's go delete that. We'll make all of this editable. <coughs> um, let's take a look at everything again. Where do we want to cut off this ring here? So I think we'll go um, select ring selection with our faces. Go fill selection, delete all of that. Bring in a new null, put that inside the null. We'll rotate this 180 degrees. You can go and redo this again on the other side if you want, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just trying to save a bit of time here. So this left side here, I think we can go ahead. Are these two matching is the question in terms of um, polygons? check I think they are so that's good so we can go and make this editable you might want to keep a save of this actually so we'll keep a saved version we'll make this editable and then we'll go ring selection here go full selection go select invert delete and I think we'll go and how are we going to do this? Oh, that's funny. Um, let's just undo that. I think this thing should be turned on to two and then we'll just go and do that again. So now we can go select ring selection. This thing cuts off there. So this thing, okay. Select, fill select, select, invert, delete. Then we can just combine these two together. And these should not be connected now. So to connect those, we can just go mesh optimize like so, save it. Let's bring everything back in into our live viewer and see if that worked. <coughs>
that's a quick fix. If you want to go and redo it um, the proper way, you can, but that's just a quick fix for me. So now both sides are functioning correctly. So let me just make sure this is not not necessary. I'll turn that down to 1000 just for the previewing purposes for now. Um, <clears throat> and then we can start looking at our actual texturing. So texturing often depends on your lighting, but there's some texturing which don't you don't really need to worry about lighting too much with at first. So we'll start off with this section here. And here we'll just go with a leathery look. So we'll turn this diffuse down to no. Yeah, we'll turn it down to zero. And then we'll bring in a roughness map with a leather texture on it. So we'll go image texture. Then I'll get some polygon textures out here. Man-made. And then we'll go with a leather texture like so. Turn our projection to box. Then in the UV transform here, we'll scale this down like so. And let's start to look at our references again here. So let's go back to art station. <clears throat> and take a look at what we used for this. Yeah, here I did use that. Um, but I used a different one. I used this one, I think. Crocodile Glossy. Yeah, so we can go copy this. We can paste it inside our normal map here. And then we can bring in the normal map version. Okay, cool. And then we can also bring in our specular as well. And you can see it's applied to the top here. I <laughs> don't remember doing that. But let's just go and I applied it to the whole symmetry. That's why. So let's just go and apply it to our actual thing there. Cool. So the specular wasn't a great idea. Let's just turn that off and let's turn that on. Um, here we can go, where is this thing? For the section here, we can go with a rubberish texture. It all depends on what you want to do. Go create a new octane material, pop it on there, and then let's go and set our selection. Then here I'll just bring in a rough, a rough rubbery texture. So I go normal map, image texture, and we can go for hand rubber smooth. Bring in the normal map, projection set to box. And we scale it down like so. And then we can also bring in our roughness map for that. You might want to bring in a, the section here is actually quite dark and doesn't have that much reflection. So you also might want to bring in the reflection map as well. But it's all up to personal preference. And then on this side here, just go into here, we can go select, um, how are we going to do that? Let's go ring select, select, fill selection, set selection, and then we can just copy this and then put in our selection there and then it should be applied. Like so, so bring back everything again and things are starting to look quite dandy. So I think for most of it, we'll just use a solid color. Uh, we won't go with anything fancy. We'll go and apply this there. I think we'll go for a reddish color. We'll go and apply it to everything else that will be the same color. So take a look at our reference. Here you also see that I've cut in these holes um, I'm not going to do that. It's just add an unnecessary time. Um, let's go bring that in. 
and then where else is this applied it's also applied over there so that means it should be down there and then on here as well it should be applied down there like so cool so for this texture you can go and create a mix material you can put in what's this thing called we'll call this body you can put in the body there um so here we'll put the body at the bottom or we'll put the body at the top and then we'll just go select this texture here we'll copy that and we'll use that as a mask so we'll paste then we'll go and replace it just make sure it's actually being replaced by doing that. And then we'll create a new diffuse material and this will be our emission. Like so. So now we can just go put the emission at the top there quickly. And now you can see that we're starting to mask this out and get what we actually want. So on the other side, I'm going to make sure that's also replaced. So let's just replace that like so. And now here, um, well, not we won't turn on the emission yet. And I don't want to start rendering li unnecessary lights and slowing down things. So this top part, um, we'll go with the same rubbery texture that we're using down here. So we will go and call this leather. Then we'll go and put the leather there cool and then we'll create a new mix material we will replace this top piece here we'll take this razor logo inside the mixing material we'll put it inside there we'll put the leather at the bottom and then we can put our logo color whatever you want to call it logo logo color we can make it a green color for now just so we can see it and put it at the top and here we can just go invert and there you go so i think we'll go i don't know what color scheme to use hmm we could go with Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so let's actually do this first. Let's go and select this. We'll go and apply our body onto it. But we'll just go solo this quickly. And here we'll go select in our faces. Select. Oh, select. Okay, so we have that selected already. We'll go set selection and we'll create a new emission. So we call this headphone emission emission or mic emission. And we'll go and apply this there <coughs> like that. Put that down there. Cool. There you go and unsolo it. This piece here will go and create a specular material. Apply the specular material. And we'll change, we'll turn on the fake shadows. Change the index to 1.6. You can start, you can see this stuff going wrong here. So I think I maybe want to actually. Um, they might be intersecting with each other, which might be causing issues. So how can we scale this without, um, how can we scale this correctly is the question. I'm not too sure if we can do that. Let's go and select all of them and we'll just extrude them in like very, very slightly just so that they're not intersecting. Untick create caps. You want to remember that. And what's the smallest amount we can extrude them? 
0.001. I think because of these lines here, we're getting some incorrect extrusions. I also want to go and change this um, view clipping down to tiny so that we don't get any more clipping. So let's get rid of all these lines and we'll just scale them down very, very small. So let's get rid of those lines, go back into our faces and we can see how small we can extrude this thing. Let's go 0 0.01. 0 0.001. Uh, 0 0.002. Uh, 0.002. Cool. So if we go and bring in these lines again, it should hopefully work. Bring those lines in. Uh, reuse. And then there, there. There. So let's smooth this again. Cool, so I think that's corrected now. And then we can give this some roughness, maybe 0.3. So I still haven't decided what colors I want to go for. I think I'll just go with a, a red, just to make it look unique. Um, if it's green, I want to, if it's green, it'll look just like everything else. So go with a red this time to change things up. Something like that. Uh, but do you see we're already having issues here? Uh, here, <clears throat> I think we'll just make the lights and stuff white. So let's raise the logo at the top. We'll go with that same red color. 70%. Zero, 70. And then this headphone strap here. You can sort of do whatever you want with this. I think I'll just go and apply the same leather material. Like so. But I don't like how this part's coming out here. So let me just go and select this here. Select the spline. Maybe if I go, where's the points? Push that down. Yeah, that's the issue with this type of mode. It doesn't look too great. Let's go busy. No. B spline. Let's delete that. No. Maybe it's this point that's making it look weird. Let's do that. Let's do that. Now it should look a bit better. Cool. So it depends on the lighting you're going for. Um, I think I'll start setting up a camera here just for thumbnail purposes. The actual final thumbnail may not look what it looks like in this tutorial, but that's just because I spent more time thinking about it. But I think I'll go and get rid of this. No, let's not do that yet. We'll just go and insert a camera. Let me go for something like this. Like so. So now we can go and turn up those black bars, squash this down, we'll go get rid of our environment, we'll go and apply a protection tag onto our camera here, just go get rid of this cone. For our environment we'll go and create a octane light here, and where's the details, let's turn this down to 20. 100, go create a null, we can go push this out to 100, we'll go take a look here, <clears throat> let's rotate this 180 degrees, go inside our camera here, if this thing could update, cool, uh, let's rotate this around that side. Oh, that's a nice mysterious look. 
let's duplicate this let's see what angle we can go for that will sort of complement this I think we need some roughness on this texture here so we'll go 0.4 then we can turn on our emissions here. So we'll go black body emission. We'll go and turn on our post processing. We'll blur out that. And then inside here, maybe we can go surface bright. No, let's go one, two. And then in here as well. We can turn on this black body emission as well. One, I think we'll turn it on inside this preview here as well, just so we can get a better view. Turn off that blurring. And we'll go one like that. Maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.05. Okay, Not, I actually don't really like that being an emission. I think it's fine without it. Um, take a look at our render settings, make sure everything's fine. And then we can go and add some depth of field. We can make this our focus object here. We can go F stop eight. Okay, so lighting, you kind of have to experiment depending on your textures and stuff. Uh, I think we want we might want some more detail in our texturing. So, especially the main body since that will be most of it. Um, so we'll just go and add some slight scratches and stuff like that. So if you want this to be a plastic material, we'll go for plastic. So we'll go with plastic texture here. We've got projection box. Just turn up the file to 25 so we can sort of see it better. And then we can scale it down 0.1. Okay, let's scale it down even more 0 0.01. And let's try and solo something so we can sort of see a bit better. Let's change this view mode need a solo an object so we can s get faster refresh times and see what we're doing with our texturing. Let's turn this power down to 15. Let's go down to one again. Okay. We're getting very, very, it's even hard to see for me, but we're getting very, we want some very slight scratches and bumps. Something that sort of it just looks real. It doesn't have to look all messy and scuffy. So maybe something like that. Um, but the scale might be too small. So let's go zero five. We'll bring in a TIFF file just so we have some slight more slightly added detail. And. <clears throat> mm, I don't know what to do with, maybe we can go and bring in some dirt, just some slight amount of dirt. So let's go, I don't actually want to do that. We're going to have to repeat, we're going to have to re-texture everything, re-add the textures to everything. So maybe I can bring in a, a roughness map to just slightly help it. So let's go bring in this glossy map here. Turn that down to one. What's it like with it off? No, I like with it off like this. On. I think we need a closer look. Okay, I think we're kind of getting what what I, what I was looking for there. Um, but yeah, I guess it's all up to you in terms of what you want to do that. Let's add some more scratches onto this thing. I think it needs a bit more oomph. I think you should also maybe add some slight, very slight fingerprints in your roughness channel. I think that will really help. 
but I've sort of done these things over and over like a hundred times in all my tutorials. So I kind of don't want to just keep repeating myself. I think, I think people are sort of getting the hang of how this thing works. Um, so I'm just going to add this one texture in and then I think I won't touch it anymore. Let's go zero, zero, one. Take a look and see if it's actually bit. okay. So we're getting some scratches in now. Okay, so let's bring everything in. That's the idea. You just want to add some on every texture. You want to add some like variations in terms of fingerprint marks and scratches and dirt, which I've done multiple times in all my tutorials. So that's kind of that's how you sort of get your final effect here. <clears throat> and the lighting depends on what sort of dramatic effect you're going for. I can even turn this off completely and just have the logo shining there. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this um, Cinema 4D and Octane render tutorial. This took a lot of work to put together, but we got through it. And I forgot this last piece here. I should also bevel this edge here. Where's this thing? Cube. Maybe select all these faces just through a lazy way by going like that. Let's go bevel the edges here. But this, like, you know, again, you can do this in your own time, sort of getting these right. You can apply that leather texture as well onto it. Like so. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, Cinema 4D and Octane render tutorial. Took a lot of work to put, to put this thing together, but um, we got through it. Once again, if you enjoyed, please like this video. If you want to get this um, project, you can download it on patreon.com slash Arthur Whitehead. You can download this whole project, the tutorial version and the, and the version that I made. Um, and then you'll be able to get it all there. Um, yeah, the tutorial went a lot better than I thought. Um, follow me on Instagram slash Arthur Visuals. I post um, a lot of my work there. I'm the most active there. Um, so you can follow me there if you wanna see what I'm up to in my day to day. And then also follow me on facebook.com slash Arthur Visuals. And then you can see all my posts, my tutorials and stuff there. But if you wanna get this project, patreon.com slash Arthur Whitehead and you'll be able to download this project and you'll be able to download the, um, any of the other projects that I've done. I'll post them there if it's not client work related. But yeah, it took a lot of work putting this tutorial together, but a lot of people did want it made. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, the, the modeling process was a bit uh, rough. It was a bit stumbly to get through. But uh, with some nice editing of mine, I was able to edit out the parts where I sort of got stuck and the parts where uh, I might have wasted a bit of your time. But it sort of got smoother and smoother as you went along. Um, it was really a pleasure to put this whole project together. I didn't think I'd get through it. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something. Um, if you did, you can give me a nice subscribe there and you can follow me on Instagram and that would be a pleasure to do. So. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, the rest is up to you in, way, in terms of where you want to take it and how you want to compose your final images and stuff like that. I uh, hope you've learned some new concepts in terms of modeling, um, texturing and post-processing in terms of like your camera work and stuff like that and a little bit of lighting. Lighting is very subjective so um, I could spend another video, another hour video on that alone. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great day and I will see you on my next video. Goodbye.